before we dive into today's tutorial, I want to let you know that this video has been recorded using early alpha version of N810 AI. Since then, several exciting updates and improvements have been implemented. This means that some of the features that we will discuss today can now be found under slightly different paths in the sidebar menu. If you have any questions or insights about N810 AI, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And now let's jump right into the video. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to show you some really cool new features that you can find in the new NA10 release. Basically what you can find is the integration with Langchain. So there are many new Langchain nodes that you can use natively in NA10. You can build chatbots, autonomous workflows and so on. The possibilities are really cool and really broad. So let's jump into it and let's see how we can build the very easy conversational agent. So right now I'm going to add new nodes and as you can see, you can find the new Langchain AI nodes tab in NA10. So I'm going to click it and of course there are many possibilities here. We have agents, chains, document loaders, memory and so on. So basically we can select from the many different options which we can of course connect together. So right now I'm going to click on agents and I'm going to um, add conversational agent to the canvas. So as you can see, this looks a bit different than traditional nodes in, in NA10. And of course we can connect the other nodes to this conversational agent. So of course here required is model. So I'm going to add the model and I will choose chat open AI, which is already um, I've already added my credentials here, so I don't need to do this anymore. And we have also, also option to add the memory tools and output parser. And we will skip memory and output parser for now, but we will um, add tools. Um, for In this example, we will add one tool, which is uh, Wikipedia, because we want to make the very easy conversational agent with knowledge base from Wikipedia. So I'll, I've added this to, to the canvas, but we also need to um, add the new trigger, which is available in this Langchain nodes library. So I'm going to delete the manual execution node and I'm going to add um, chat trigger, which is the very new trigger here in NA10. Um, and as I added this to the, to the canvas, I'm going to connect it, connect it with conversational agent. Uh, I'm going to save the workflow. And as you can see, there is new tab here, which is chat. Um, when we click on it, we can make a chat with our bot. So I'm going to add the very simple question. Let's let it be, for example, how tall is Eiffel Tower, right? So I'm going to send it. Mm, and as you can see right here, uh, Wikipedia tool has been used. So of course, agent used this tool to retrieve the information from Wikipedia about height of Eiffel Tower. And in our output, I should have the information that Eiffel Tower is around 300 meter, meters tall. So of course, this works very well, but Wikipedia is not the only tool that we can use. What's really cool is we can use uh, other workflows in NA10 as, as a tools. So when I add this to the canvas, I can select the workflow that I, I want to use in the very specific situations and let the agents decide when this tool should be used. But this is something that we are going to do in the next example. So let's dive into it. So I want to use workflow tool to get information about current weather. So I changed the name to weather tool and also added the description for the agent to use this tool when I ask about the weather. And this tool should pass the name of the city as a query to the next workflow. Now I need to build such a workflow that retrieves information about the weather and simply paste the ID of this workflow to the workflow tool node. I've already created such an automation and I use here example value of query parameter, which is city Berlin. And this parameter is passed to the next node, which is open weather map API. Here, after I execute this node, I receive information about current weather in Berlin. 
Since this data is expressed in JSON format, I need to create explanation of it in plain English. So I created a simple prompt in which I asked OpenAI to create such an interpretation of those JSON parameters. Because it's quite important for me to get the correct information about the weather, I limited the temperature of the model to zero. Eventually in the output I should receive really cool interpretation of the weather in plain English, which is ready to be passed back to the agent. To do this I simply use setNote and I create the response parameter and as a value of this parameter I simply pass the interpretation of the weather in plain English from the previous note. Now when everything is ready I don't need example data anymore, so I disconnect the query node from the workflow. And basically what I need to do right now is simply edit slightly an expression in Open Weather Map API node and save the workflow. Now I need to just copy its ID and paste into the workflow tool. So I go back to my previous automation with conversational agent and paste the ID in field workflow ID. After saving the workflow I can now test it using the chat window. So I will ask the simple question what is the weather today in Warsaw? After a few seconds of course I should receive the response and in the right window we can see that agent used our workflow tool and passed the query Warsaw which is the name of the city to this workflow. When we close the chat window we can see that in this run only workflow tool has been used by the agent and Wikipedia tool was totally inactive. To test the agent even more I will ask the question right now what is the capital of Spain and after sending it I should receive a response but this time in the right box of the chat window I should see that Wikipedia tool has been used. So our conversational agent autonomously decides which tool should be triggered to retrieve the very specific information depending on the context of the question. If we don't want to trigger a separate workflow every time we use a workflow tool, we can change a source to parameter. To make it work, I will go right now to the workflow that I used as a tool, select all the nodes and copy them. Then I will go back to my mine workflow and simply paste the JSON of this workflow to my workflow tool node. After clicking save, I can open the chat window again and test my conversational agent. So I ask the question, what is the weather today in Vienna? Then I click send and after a few seconds I should receive a response. As you can see in the right box, the workflow tool has been used correctly and this is totally without triggering a separate workflow from my NA10 library. And now let's dive into the next example and let's see how we can use vector databases using new long chain nodes in NA10. As an example document for this workflow I will use repair manual for MacBook Pro and this document has of course a lot of sites and I will copy the URL to this PDF and simply create a workflow that downloads this file. For this purpose I use HTTP request node and in field URL I paste the address of my PDF document. And now it's time to create a vector table in our database and for this purpose I use Supabase. Normally I would create a table using new table button but this time I will use Langchain Quick Start. If you run this code for the very first time in your Supabase project you want to run it as it is. But since I've already enabled my vector extension and created a function to search documents I want to delete part of this code and simply create a table. Now after I click run I should receive a confirmation that table has been created and I can go back to my table editor to see the construction of the table. Next I need to insert the content of my PDF document to this database. So I go back to my NA10 workflow and I need to use Supabase insert node. To find it I go to the library of new long chain nodes in NA10 and under tab vector stores I should see Supabase insert and in field table name I simply paste the name of my table which is documents. Now I need to connect the document loader to this node because I need to process the data before it is stored in the vector database. So as a loader type I choose PDF. Since the document loader requires connecting the text splitter I will choose recursive character text splitter and I will set the chunk size to 4000 and chunk overlap to 300. The last one node that I need to connect to this workflow before I execute it is embeddings. So I connect it, I save the workflow and it's ready to be tested. 
After I click Execute, the workflow should download the PDF file from Apple website, chunk it and assign embeddings. Finally, it should be inserted into the Superbase table. The whole process may take a while, but when we go to the table editor in Superbase, we can see that new records are being inserted into this table. When the data is ready, we can now build a workflow to make a chat with this PDF document. And for this purpose, I will build a separate workflow using vector store QA chain from the new library of Langchain nodes in NA10. First, I need to add the trigger to my workflow, so I choose manual chat trigger. And then I need to connect it with the chain, so I go to the chain section and I choose vector store QA chain. Then I need to connect my chain node with some other nodes, so the first one is model and I choose chat open AI. Then I need to connect the vector store and I use Superbase, so this is the one that I connect with my chain. And in the field table name, I enter the name of my table, which is documents. The last one node that I need to connect with my workflow is embeddings, and this is what I do. Finally, I need to adjust the temperature of the model, so I reduce it to zero, because I want to receive the information that based only on the data that I provide in my PDF file. At this point, workflow is fully ready to be tested. So first I need to save it and then I open the chat window. I will ask the example question how to replace the fan in MacBook Pro. Then I will click send and after a few seconds, I should receive a response that is totally based on the information from the PDF. If we have a look on the response, we should see that our bot fully understood our question and we received the full procedure of replacing the fan in MacBook Pro. Since we are testing the workflow, we can go to our PDF file and find the section which contains information about replacing a fan. And in our case, our bot provided fully correct response based on the information from the PDF. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and to my newsletter, link in the description. And of course, see you very soon. Bye.